right, welcome back to Ancient Amnesia Podcast. I'm Josh, your host, and I got a lot of really good um, feedback on an ancient Texas Indian mound podcast I did some months ago, and now that the weather is starting to turn up, I wanted to go back to that property and talk a little bit more about not just the Indian mounds, but also some geology. In this particular region of Texas, this is a uh, what's called a escarpment zone, which is where f- ancient fault lines pushed up a uh, Cretaceous era seabed that brought all the limestone to the surface. I mean, all the uh, sand of the surface, and over the millions of years and thousands of years, it turned into limestone. And where these faults were, um, you have this exposed older rock. And in this area, there's a lot of flint rock. And as an example, this is flint. And this flint is the same flint that the Indians and Paleo Indians were using to make their tools. In fact, uh, back thousands and thousands of years ago, flint was um, the most valuable you know, ammunition, so to speak. And um, this area had some of the highest quality flint rock in the world. And so some points that have been found in Paleo-Indian sites all the way up to New Mexico show that the flint rock came from this area. And around 5,000 or 6,000 years ago, there were more people in this area, more Indians than there are people today. So Uh, This was an incredible trade route highway where Indians were coming down and uh, trading flint uh, with animal furs and all kinds of things. And as we talked in the last podcast where we checked out that Indian mound and were able to see some flakes and points, um, the Indians would basically come to these areas and, and set up all along the rivers different sites. And one of the sites would be like a quarry site where they would find large pieces of flint. That flint rock is known as a crypto quartz. It's as hard as quartz. It's seven on the hard scale. It is very, very dense, but it's also uh, easy to flake. And so they could use antlers. And look, this is a, a flint rock that's got some fossils in it. And so they would use the quarry sites to kind of break it into smaller pieces and then they would have what was called like a finishing site and that finishing site is where they made all the fine points and the heads and and uh, this is where that Indian mound site was it was like the final kind of a uh, uh, chipping site for finishing the harrow heads and you can see in this creek bed that all of this rock here is mostly flint rock there's some limestone, and there's even some ancient volcanic rock in here. And upon researching that, there was actual ancient volcanoes in this area um, going back millions of years. I think it was pre-Cretaceous, if I'm correct. I'll uh, update that to be sure, but um, it's very, very ancient. So some of these rocks in here are incredibly old, and it's because we're in this fault region that we get to see such ancient rock through the creeks, which is really, really cool. And so these Indians did all these major trades through the um, the Flint areas all the way up to you know the New Mexico and probably even further. Um, so it's really interesting. And one thing I also wanted to talk about today was the crystals that are on this property. And there's Um, lots of natural forming celestite which is a crystal you generally will see out of Madagascar it has this like powder blue color and uh, you can see here this ancient creek where this is the bedrock this is bedrock limestone as it's hitting that bedrock that water's rushing down into these creek beds so it's really really cool and uh, these 
uh, creek beds expose lots and lots of different things. And look here, I actually just found some celestite. Now this celestite here, you can see in the sun, it's gleaming. This celestite is red. And the reason why it's red is because the meteorites and the volcanic rock that's inside this creek um, is leaching that color and it's uh, tinting and dyeing the celestite that red. So you, on this property, you can find celestite in all kinds of colors, ranging from orange, red, to white, to a very, very deep, dark blue. And it's actually the element strontium that is making that blue color. And it's because, look, I found another one. And this one's also red and you can see how you really have to have a good eye to find these crystals but look at this wow I just discovered this one and it is a really cool red color look at that and you can see that agate ring as it's forming and so one thing I've learned about finding crystals on this property is that what tends to happen is the organic mass that's within the flint rock um, mixed with some of the limestone look here look at this fossil here you can see this is a, a cretaceous era fossil a fantel and you can see even on this rock there's some fantels going on here so really really cool area look another crystal just everything right here i'm not even walking much but you can see that crystalline so because of all the mineralizations of the aquifer water and the aquifers when that when that fault hit in the Cretaceous, um, it drove up all this organic sea mass because Texas was a, a lowland ocean in the Cretaceous area, in this area. And um, it turned basically all the rocks into fossils and the mineralization of the, the, the water after millions of years of um, hardening the, uh, the, the ancient sand turned into limestone and the, and the ancient rains over the course of millions of years created these caverns and these uh, aquifer systems and so now texas under the hill country has major aquifer systems and and it um, bubbles up whenever it rains we get about 40 inches of rain a year in this area so uh, texas is known for its floods and then it floods in and then it springs out and remineralizes so a lot of this stuff is just being hit with lots of minerals and lots of rinsing and that tends to be how these crystals are forming. Um, so it's a really, really unique area. And you can actually see, here's some volcanic rock from that even more ancient time, see? See, that is a volcanic chunk. This is an ancient chunk of some, you know, super ancient volcano that was in this area. So it's really, really amazing. I mean, it's just like a geologist's dream out here where you have the celestite formations coming from the, the mix of flint rock, which has organic mass in it. It's also like a, a, a basically a quartz that has organics. And uh, then you have the limestone and everything's mixing together and molding. And this is what's kind of creating all of these crystals and these, these uh, uh, formations. Um, so really, really interesting. Um, and if you guys are interested more in some of that celestite, you can reach out to me um, via email at joshancientamnesia at gmail.com. And I can send you some photos of some of the major ones that I have found. Look, here's some more of that volcanic rock, volcanic rock. And see, here's a, a piece of very high-end flint where you can see that blue kind of color, very sharp. Um, very hard, easy to chip, but very, very dense, as dense as quartz. Um, really, really interesting stuff. So you have to imagine that the Indians who are in this area had to have also found these crystals. And I've always been fascinated by maybe what they thought they were and some of the ideas that they had on what these things were. I mean, I can imagine that they would have seen them as beautiful and probably collected them to some degree and I haven't really found any information on whether they traded crystals or things like that but 
to me, it would seem like it would be like a religious thing. Look, here's one right here. Here's another one. You see that popping out of the ground? So we have celestite in this blue. See how pretty that is? It's in a very dark, dark blue where it's got some of that little bit of leaching, but not much. This one's pretty pure. That's a really nice color. So that's pretty high quality in terms of the strontium content in that crystal. Really, really makes it nice and blue. So uh, really, really cool. So in this ancient creek, which you can actually see from Google Earth, it's a really deep creek. goes throughout the entire property and it pans over the three or 400 acres here. And then there's another 200 acres that it also flows through behind us. Look, another crystal chunk here. So we see this one's a little more uh, white, but it also has some of that little hint of uh, iron leaching from the meteorites and the volcanic rock. And so as you get off of the inside of the creek, you'll start seeing more white, more blue, because the the meteorites and the a volcanic rock tends to be more in the creeks. So uh, I normally uh, go across the, uh, was that another one? No. Um, kind of at the ridge of the creeks, and I find lots of them because that's where the water's pouring down, so you have a lot of mineralization going, and you'll find lots of them uh, along that. So I thought you guys would be interested in some of that. Um, here's a chunk of flint here you can see right there. Really, really cool all over the place. So this is why the Indians were here. Uh, so many, look, here's another celestite. I mean, this is just littered with, with celestite. See that? It looks like a little, kind of a little jellyfish or a man of war or something. Really, really cool. So you can tell that there's that flint on it. So we know that the flint is a huge part. And then you have these little burrs right here. This is all just straight limestone. So you can see that the limestone is uh, on with the flint, and I think that that mixture of the limestone, the flint, and then when you have the mineralization from the, the water, um, that's what's kind of growing these things. Uh, it's hard to tell how old some of these things are. Um, there's also been instances where we build big fires and we rock ring it, and the heat gets such that the flint explodes, and we have found um, powder white crystalline structures inside just what looks to be regular chunks of flint. So there's a lot of this going on um, out here. It's really, really beautiful. So that's a little bit of Texas geology. We hope you guys enjoyed this little clip. We had a lot of people saying, please talk more about the Indian Mounds. We wanted to do a little bit of that. We also wanted to talk a little more about crystals and the geology in the area. And I thought that would be a cool thing to do. So uh, thanks for stopping in. Stay tuned. Go to ancientamnesia.com for uh, more info. We've been kind of picking things back up. So appreciate you tuning in. Also, we opened a Rumble account. So please go to Rumble. We're also on BitChute. And uh, you'll be seeing a little bit more from us more often. Thanks for being around. And have an awesome day.